Hello everyone, this is Venus Brown. Today I will be doing a reaction to The Crown, Season 1, Episode 5, called Smoke and Mirrors. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you want more content, click subscribe. If you click that little bell and click all, then you'll get more content notifications. even reached the anointing. <laughs> you have to anoint me. Otherwise, I can't be king. It is the most important part of the entire ceremony. So we had better practice, hadn't we, Archbishop? <laughs> Yes, I hope I never see. <laughs> right, my background comes from it's this. It's not as easy as it looks. It's exactly what the king said. Yeah. I remember. For a couple of days. She looks like That's she did when she was little. Well, on this. <laughs> From whom? If it's not yours, whose is it? The countries? Maybe? Is there a pretty? The Duke is. His Royal Highness went flying with that. <laughs> Again? It would have to be jolly important to distract me from getting my wings faster than anyone in British aviation <laughs> history. It is. I'd like you to come aboard my coronation committee. In which capacity? As chairman. But you already have one. Oh. And ask the Duke of Norfolk to make room for you. I want to make a public declaration of my trust in you. There's no need to matronise me. I'm not matronising you. Yes, you are. You're taking pity on me and giving me a job for appearance's sake. No, it's not that. I was just thinking how I'd like us to spend more time together. What are you talking about? We spend all our time together. No, we don't. You're always off flying or lunching with strange men. Oh, a few hours a week, darling. Anyway, what else am I supposed to do? Sit around and wait for you while you're queening? Queening? Yes, queening. Maybe I'd like your help with the Queen. Oh, in the same flattering way you asked me to redecorate Clarence House. Well, you did that jolly well. I felt like a sissy. Fussing about curtain fabrics and paint charts. Honestly, it's just queening of another sort. <laughs> it's just queening of another sort. I don't know. How did the higher up people feel about Philip? Duke Philip. Is it Duke or Prince? I thought it was Prince. Total control or nothing at all. Wait a minute, maybe it was, he's Duke right now, because the Queen has not been crowned yet, he is not Prince, but when she becomes crowned, he becomes Prince. I like the dress, not too fond of the hairstyle in that one. He lets no one in here, it's his private room. Not secrets, darling. Memories, <laughs> precious memories. It's the final box I received as king. It contained my abdication papers. And all these photographs of you as king, they were not with the crown. Why is that? I never made it that far. Oh, he didn't actually get crowned. I never had a coronation. I didn't realize that. Huh. I thought he abdicated I after he had been crowned. I had a call today from Sir John Weir. He is so... Oh. Her mother's doctor. Pale and... Telling me that in his careless. opinion, <laughs> he's in her final days now. 
Queen is young. And has to learn what any young general has to learn. Namely? Which battles to fight and which to lead. <laughs> well, let me know what you want me to do. Queen is always Tommy. Exactly as I tell you. Be sure to be firm, Tommy. Yes, ma'am. That one's like Mercury. Will slip through the tiniest crack. She'll never again be able to leave her rooms. Far less go out in public. Oh. It's one of the hardest things I've ever had to endure. And spending so much time with a woman who has been so vicious and inhumane to you, my beloved, is wearing me down. The right thing. Regarding what? The coronation. What about the coronation? And would be deeply upsetting. To whom? To everyone concerned. I didn't ask you, Tommy. And if I want, and I do want, and so does my wife. Alas, no, sir. Of course, the royal family is obliged to extend an invitation to you as a royal duke. But that obligation does not extend to the Duchess of Windsor. And it is my duty to inform you, on behalf of the royal family and the government with whom we have worked in close consultation, that she will not be offered an invitation. Oh, it's mad. Let's face it. This whole thing is a charade. You knew already the answer to the Make choice you have given me. It is simply the same. Christian charity, how very scant you are, you old lang swine. Oh, how full swine. of cant you are. <laughs> A rhyme composed for your perfidious predecessor at the time of my abdication. I find the sentiment oddly applicable to you, too. <laughs> We've just had a call from Marlborough House. Regarding Her Majesty Queen Mary. I suspected that. You notice? Identical to the funeral of your father, nothing different, not one detail. Not one guest. Right. And she always regarded herself as a. And I think your coronation should reflect that. Well, as much. Take the idea of being in charge of the coronation more seriously now. The speech. We should go. I think coming up with speeches, I don't have that much issue with. It's trying to remember what I'm going to speak and how I'm going to speak. Trying to memorize everything. <laughs> that I struggle with a lot. Usually try to use cues. Sometimes even the cues don't work very well. Britain today is not Britain of past coronations. Assumptions made at the time of my father-in-law's coronation 17 years ago cannot be made anymore. Make it less ostentatious, more egalitarian. Show more respect and sensitivity to the real world. We have a new sovereign, young, and a woman. Exciting technological developments are making things possible we never dreamt of. Which brings me to my next point. They looked like they were not too happy to see him, but then once he started talking about wanting things not to be as ostentatious. They were like perking up and they're like, oh, oh, maybe it's not going to be as bad as we thought. <laughs> See, when I think of stuff like this, I think that a lot of people don't want so much grandeur and stuff because, because for them, Especially if they're feeling the tightness of the economy and stuff like that. They're going to see that as all this spending of money while they are hurting. And so seeing 
royalty and politicians, things like that, spending all kinds of money rather than other things around the nation. I think a lot of people see that negatively. So being willing to put less grandeur into a ceremony like that, I would think a lot of people would approve of that. But I don't know. I wasn't there at the time. I don't know. I don't know exactly how the people were feeling about this stuff then. Right now, I'm pretty sure he's very much more wanting the, you know, all those traditions to stay in place. It's the crown. And one has to ask one. But then what about the rest of the world? Does the crown bend to the will of the people to be audited and accountable? Or should it remain above temporal matters? Or should you have some sort of happy medium? What say you? It goes a little bit in between. A little bit of both. No, ma'am. What say you? The decision is yours to make. We will take our lead. From you. About time. Because <laughs> most of the time it seems like you're not willing to let her take the lead. My father would have been killed. My grandfather was. I'm just trying to protect you. From whom? The British people? Yeah. You have no idea who they are or what they want. Uh, uh, but you're I'm not all, foreign, you're not okay, just in charge of the British fine, people. Fine. You want to be the You've place, colonized so many nations and you have control over a lot of people. But don't come bleating to not me you, when your hair and your heads country. of my children are on spikes. But the people are hungry, they want something that lifts them up. And put it in their homes, allow them to watch it with their dinner on their necks. Democratize it, make them feel that they're sharing it, understand it. All right. You won't regret it. <laughs> On one condition. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Crown is the Crown itself, the I family mean. members of the Crown have always been a little bit afraid of letting common people peer too far into their lives. The times that they have is allowed it. it. Like it's like they regretted it. Like right now with the current episodes of the Crown. Before God and the about how it's it's not a accurate representation. Oh, spare me the false. I am both, and a strong man will be able to kneel to those. I will not kneel before my wife. But your wife is not asking you to. But my queen commands me. Yes. I beg you make an exception for me. No. She's a queen. She's the queen of everybody there including her husband. And what do you think that sounds like to her? You're not willing to give her the respect of her title? That is freaking disrespectful. Patronizing. Is it patronizing or patronizing? And I would assume that this would be very exciting for people. Like, you don't get to watch something like this every day. I think TV was fairly new. I don't know for sure. Now once they started having live television broadcasts, or even television, how long did it take between that period and when they actually started having color TV and live color broadcasts? Anybody know? Very curious about that. Count the anointing. The single most holy, most solemn, most sacred moment of the entire service. So how can we all get to see it? Because we are mortals. Because we are mortals. In the name of the Father. Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Who wants transparency? Where you can have magic. <laughs> Who wants prose? Where you can have poetry. 
I turned it down for something greater still. For now. I wouldn't have imagined he would have had the, even the guts to go up there like that and then not bow. I wonder what it's like to be in his wife's shoes, though. How does she feel? All we really get to see is these muted responses. We don't really get to see a lot of how she really is feeling about the whole situation. So that was episode five of the first season of The Crown. We got to see, like, kind of the behind the scenes putting the coronation together and then having it all take place. I'm assuming that was the first televised coronation, at least for Britain. Like, I would think that for the people, that that would be very exciting to see something like that, especially early in technology. Um, hearing things like that on the radio, seeing them on TV, big celebrations like that of the king and queen. I would think that people would be very excited about that. Now, her uncle, who abdicated the throne, you see a lot of venom from him and to him. I don't blame him, honestly. At this point, it's time to move on and let things go. Yes, what he did was really devastating, and what he did probably did advance the poor health of the king, but he did what he felt was right for his family, for his situation, for his wife. So, I, I just think... I think the whole family holding on to that and just letting that hatred and anger just continue to fester like that for so long, I don't think it helps anybody. I don't think it helps them. I don't think it helps the other person that you're angry and hateful towards. And I definitely don't think that it's helping their country. He did something that really changed the course of history. It's over a decade later. Maybe it's time to put some of this stuff aside and move on. We've seen how the Crown deals with family problems. They do not like to deal with them. <laughs> they like to just push them aside and just continue treating them terribly for perpetuity. And I don't see it as helpful, but... What do I know? I'm not royal. And again, that was Season 1, Episode 5 of The Crown. I will see you on the next episode. Bye. Until next time, I'll see you when I see you. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you want more content, click subscribe. If you click that little bell and click all, then you'll get more content notifications. 